Hello and welcome to lesson number one, video tutorial on XP Basics. This is actually part of a five video course, which I will teach you all about XP's. There's actually many things that XP can do. However, I'm only going to teach you the most common uses for the XP. Here's a summary of each lesson. Lesson one has general information about XP's and covers initial setup. In lesson two, I show you how to create a simple chat using two XP's in AT mode. Lesson 3 gets us into API mode, where we will gather digital input from a remote XP. Lesson 4, we stay with using the API mode and gather analog data from a remote XP. Lastly, with Lesson 5, we finish with sending digital output to a remote XP. Throughout these video lessons, I will be relying heavily on the XP Quick Reference Guide that I created. I made this to save myself a lot of time instead of searching all over the internet for common information on XP's, I put everything in one spot. I highly recommend you go to my blog, which the link is down below, and download this, print it out, and have it with you throughout all the lessons. It'll make things a lot easier. I actually teach from this, so you don't have to keep notes. You just have to reference this next time you need to learn some, next time you need to remember anything about XP's. Um, if you do find it to be useful and handy, all I ask is that you donate a dollar or two on my blog, uh, to show your thanks. I really appreciate it. Now let's get into XP. XP is a wireless microcontroller made by Digi. It utilizes the Zigbee 802.14.5 protocol to communicate between two wireless radios. It consists of 20 pins and a little antenna. Well it has 11 digital I.O. pins and 4 analog pins. In this video we'll cover the S2 model However, these concepts can also be applied to other XB models. The XB S2 requires 3.3 voltage to operate. It has an indoor range of 40 meters and a line of sight range of 120 meters. It uses the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. The XB's pin spacing is just a little bit too small to fit into a normal breadboard. It also uses 3.3 volts. Because of this, I recommend getting an adapter kit. These kits, oh, this one I got from Adafruit, there's many to choose from. It allows you to plug the XP straight into the board, which then allows you to plug it right into a breadboard. And because of that, things become finally useful. Even more so, it allows for you to use 5 volts or 3.3 volts, and it has a couple LED lights to indicate the status of the XP. These little boards are very handy. Another popular kit is the XP Explorer found on SparkFun. Another great feature about XP is that it interfaces with Arduino very easily. And because of that, I'm going to be using Arduino pretty heavily with, throughout these video courses. Now let's talk about how XP's are networked. One XP is called the coordinator. One and only one coordinator can be in each network. If the coordinator goes down, the network goes down. The coordinator is in charge of setting up the network, and it can never sleep. The next one we have are routers. We can have multiple routers in a network. They can relay signals from other routers or from an endpoint to a router and so forth. They can never sleep either. Lastly, we have endpoints. Endpoints, can, there could can be multiple endpoints in the network. They cannot relay signals from other endpoints or other routers. They are the endpoints. And they can go to sleep to save power. When creating your XB project, you're going to have to decide on what kind of device the XB is going to be. There are two modes the XB can be in, AT or API mode. In AT mode, the communication goes through the XB. In API mode, you can interact with an XB to send it commands or receive the data directly from the XB itself. Now let's start setting up the XB. In each project that we're going to do, we need to actually adjust the settings on the XP itself. In order to do that, we need to connect it to a computer. There are a couple ways to do that. First is the easiest method, which is getting an FTDI cable. This is what the cable looks like. It's USB on one side, and on the other side has six pins that allow you to plug straight into an XP kit. This allows you to plug straight into a computer, and it allows you to have a serial connection to your XP. Another method is to get an adapter that goes into a breadboard. Here is what it looks like. You can see here it's an FTDI adapter. This allows you to plug it into the board itself 
and then plug the correct pins into the ports needed on the XB. Then you can use a USB cable to plug into this adapter and then the other side goes into the computer. This again will allow you to use a serial connection to your XB. If you don't have any of that and you have an Arduino, you can actually hack the Arduino to get it to work as well. This, if you have an Arduino with a removable chip, you can pry that out, but I recommend not doing that. Instead, take the reset pin on the Arduino and pull that to ground, like so. When you do that on the Arduino, it actually bypasses the chip completely. So now, we want to set it up on the board. So we put the XB in there, and in this case we're going to connect the TX pin to the TX port on Arduino, and the RX pin to the RX port. This is the only time you're going to connect TX to TX and RX to RX. In all other video lessons, it's going to be switched. TX will go to RX, and RX will go to TX. Then, of course, we just need some power, 5 volts goes to 5 volts on the XB and ground goes to ground on the XB. Now when we put this into the laptop it will become a serial device that we can communicate to it to the XB. Once you have your serial connection established it's time to download some software. Digi has created a program called XCTU which you can download from their site. Unfortunately, it's only available for Windows machines at this time. It is also possible to use a terminal emulator to get into the XB using command line. This is limited and difficult to use, so I'll only be covering how to configure the XB using the XCTU software. Okay, so now that you have connected your XB up using the serial connector and you've downloaded the software, let's load up the software. Uh, upon loading it, you should see a COM port is available and this is the uh, the settings here. Baud rate is 9600. You can actually increase that to make the communication to the XB faster, but I wouldn't mess with that. Leave it at 9600. It's fine. You can click test to make sure you're communicating to your XB. It actually displays the serial number, so that's good. That's what you want. Let's go over to modem, modem configuration, and I'll click read. So the modem we want to be XB, which is XB, that's what we're using, and ZigBee. Some of these other ones, uh, ZB, uh, is what you want. Some of the other ones are for other devices that Digi makes, but we're going to be utilizing ZB only. The function set, this is where you can change between coordinator and end device and router. We covered that already. Um, between AT and API, you also have more options as well, in which we'll, we will cover more later versions, uh, later lessons. The version here is what version of software you're running. Um, let's always keep the latest version of software. So in order to do that, you to upgrade your firmware, click download new versions, click web. That'll go out to Digi's website and look for any files that you don't already have and download them. And then you can look at the version and you'll see there'll be a new version here that you don't, that isn't applied. So you would click that, click always update firmware, and then click write and that will, that will update your XB with the latest firmware. Okay, so now I want to take you through some of the settings on the XB. First is the most important PAN ID. This is the personal area network and you can set this to whatever you want but make sure that all of the XBs in your network have the same setting here. So now scrolling down you can see there's um, the serial number of this device. This you can't change but it's nice to be able to see what it is. Now the destination address. If you want to send communication to just one XB, you can put its serial number in here, both the high and the low serial numbers required. However, if you put in a zero FFFF like it is in here, it actually sends a broadcast to all of the devices within the network. That's really cool. The other option is to make it all zeros, which means that you're just going to send communication to the coordinator. Okay, lastly I want to show you down here by the pin settings. Um, let's choose one of these you can say this is where you can indicate whether a pin should be an analog input pin or a digital input pin or you can just set the pin to low or high. 
So this is this is really cool to be able to control these settings and we're going to get much more into that in later videos but I just wanted to give you a taste of what you can do. Okay so that was a lot to cover just to get us started with the XB and that concludes this lesson. Now you know what it can do, how to connect it to a computer and how to change the settings. So we can now start building some cool projects. In the next lesson I'll show you how to create a simple chat. So see you next time!